Dr. Kine, Director of the Patrick Wilde Center and Professor of Developmental Neuroscience at the University of Edinburgh, and Dr. Sonenberg, James McGill Professor of Biochemistry at McGill University, share their optimism about the next 10 years of Fragile X research. They discuss where they think the next big discoveries will emerge. Nathan, good to see you again. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You're an uh, expert in protein translation, mRNA translation, protein synthesis. I'm just um, curious if you could bring the bring me up to speed on what we know in terms of Fragile X and how uh, mRNA translation is altered in Fragile X syndrome and where you think the next big discoveries might come from. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Uh, I think this is uh, the, the central question uh, in, in the field. And for me, for, of course, it's the most important one uh, because all the disease the basis of the disease is missing one protein. So theoretically for a biochemist like me, it looks like a gold mine. It's missing a protein, we see how it works. And we know that it works in translation, discovered in 1990. So since then, we have now 30 years. Since then, we still do not understand the full range of activity of this protein. So the question that has been asked for many years is, how does it inhibit translation? Uh, most of the experiments until now show that it's inhibition of one phase of translation with the elongation, but there are also reports that one cannot discount that the inhibition, they call also inhibit initiation of translation. So the question is, which one is the correct? Are there different circumstances, et cetera? And what we know now is that there are only a few papers and one, as far as I, I'm, I know, there is one cryo-EM paper that looks at the structure. And surprisingly, it finds that the, the fMRP binds the ribosome directly. It was always thought for many years that it binds to the mRNAs, and then uh, it inhibits translation this way. So now the belief is, the general consensus, that, uh, that there might be uh, two modes of binding that can be, happen at the same time to the mRNA and to the ribosome. So next to that, what's the consequence of this binding? This we don't know. Uh, so uh, this, once we know it, I, I must emphasize it. Once, once we know this interactions of the fMRP with the ribosome and the mRNA, then of course we could better explain all the uh, physiological effects and importantly also think and design uh, drugs that can uh, now rescue this uh, this deficiency in FM, FMRP. Uh, the reason I'm so excited about the, the ability to cure the disease using the, the new technologies, and I want to, to raise uh, the mRNA, uh, mRNA technology in order to express the protein. So because the, everybody in the world now is aware of how good mRNA translation, mRNA, uh, uh, mRNA translation uh, can cure the disease, not cure, but at least uh, help tremendously to reduce it. Now, I think you're absolutely, I'm incredibly excited about all the genetic technologies, be it protein replacement um, through mRNA technology, be it gene replacement through the gene therapies. I think we're seeing a big uh, a big sea change in how we can do it. And of course, one of the big issues is getting it into enough brain cells at the right time in order to um, be able to, uh, it's essentially it's an issue of delivery. And one of the um, things I've noticed through the years being in science is that if there's a technological problem, it, rather than a conceptual one, it can generally be overcome. So we had the right. problem of DNA sequencing that was overcome, and now we can sequence a human genome 
in a couple of hours where it used to take us 10 years. The original Human Genome Project, the first person took 10 years to, to sequence their genome. I think one of the key questions for Fragile X syndrome in with these trying to address the root cause is, is there a critical period over development when that type of therapeutic intervention will be most effective? So the, the work mm -hmm. in Rett syndrome clearly showed that, or appears to be clearly demonstrating that you can replace the MECP2 gene in Rett syndrome whenever you want. And we don't know that for Fragile X syndrome. So determining whether there's critical periods, because if there are critical periods, we may lose the time window when we can effectively treat the disease by essentially replacing the gene or replacing the mRNA or the protein, in which case we're gonna still have to focus on targeting the cellular physiology, the circuit physiology, to try to at least ameliorate some of the more debilitating symptoms for the kids and their families. So uh, I would say that for the 10, next 10 years, I'm very optimistic. As uh, Peter commented uh, during this discussion, he said, when there is a technical problem, it's resolved. And uh, he brought the case of uh, the DNA. Uh, I can bring you uh, uh, cases like uh, hip replacement. You know that today it's like uh, building a house or a bridge. So once we have the ability uh, to solve this uh, technical problem of uh, delivery of the virus uh, or the messenger RNA, uh, make it like the COVID-19, uh, we will solve this uh, disease. Even, even when we don't know the basis, the basic function of the protein, uh, in the center of the disease, the FMRP. I completely agree with Nahum. I think the, I'm, I'm very optimistic on, I think on two fronts. One, I think we'll overcome the technical hurdles of delivery, be it of RNA or DNA, the, replacing the gene uh, or replacing the protein. So I think that, that um, I'm very optimistic that there will be effective treatments in the future. I still have the one concern that I mentioned earlier that this may have critical periods for when those are effective, but I'm still optimistic through pharmaceutical interventions, um, i.e. drugs, that we will learn enough about the protein over the next 20 years and its functions across development that will develop effective therapies for even people if they've crossed past the critical period and really improve the lives of people with fragile X syndrome. So I, I'm, I'm not sure there's one thing. Nahum, um, uh, the, the, the problem is biology is very complex and you have to understand it at the molecular level, you have to understand it at the physiology level, the circuit and ultimately the behavior. And Nahum is completely correct. The understanding the structure of FMRP and how it's doing its functions is going to be key to target at that level. But I think understanding how uh, the phenotypes, the pathophysiology it leads to in terms of the cellular physiology, the circuit, and ultimately the behavior, we have big challenges there as well. With And I think technology can help in new imaging techniques, but I think um, that's what's gonna take a lot more time. Peter summarized it well and uh... I think uh, more scientists uh, will agree with this. Uh, many people do not know what fragile X syndrome is. So either they are not taught, taught at school. And uh, so the awareness is important. And next is uh, uh, to, to, to get the people that can give us the support or give the scientists the support to advance this field and cure this uh, terrible disease. So I think one of the things that maybe could have been brought out is um, Fragile X is sort of the first monogenic disorder where we sort of completed the translational circle, going from uh, understanding the pathophysiology in animal models to going on to coming up with theories on what might be going wrong, 
trying to put those theories in place in the animal models and test them in the animal models, um, and really leading ultimately to drug development and clinical trials. And the first time you try those things, it rarely works. And, but Fragile X has sent the bench benchmark for a range of these monogenic neuro, severe neurodevelopmental disorders. And it, it often gets criticized because we've been doing it for 20 years now and we still don't have a therapy, but it's very rare as, as, the, as almost a test case. It's not surprising that it needs to, you need to go through those iterations numerous times before you actually get success. And so I think um, that always needs to be kept in mind that Fragile X was really the first to, to complete what's often referred to as that virtuous circle, going from gene discovery through to pathophysiology, through to theories and testing those theories numerous times, and then ultimately into clinical trials with newly developed drugs. So it's rare that, I don't know of a single case where that's happened successfully on the first try. And so Fragile X is now doing that, the iterative process, and eventually we'll get it right, I think. So I'm optimistic that eventually we'll get it right. I don't know what Nahum thinks. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. And uh, what is uh, gratifying is uh, that you need uh, uh, dif different uh, uh, different disciplines in in in, in science are so completely going from biochemistry, you know, which is uh, relatively simple in in concept. Uh, you, you have uh, protein interactions, you have enzymatic activity, you can measure it. It's it's the perfect perfect uh, precise science. Going from this one into the most complex one, the brain. This is the next frontier. I don't know when we'll understand uh, how the brain functions. So uh, you can see how this, uh, this consortium, if we can call it consortium, how this uh, effort of uh, different kind of scientists brings together to, to what looks to be. And uh, as uh, Peter said, it, it will be a cure for a disease. And uh, so, so, so that, that what's nice about science, I, I always say scientists always believe that this, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the, the future of the world, uh, that this is the panacea for all troubles and uh, the fragile X syndrome uh, cure will we'll show it. Have you seen a sea change in how science is done? Because never before, um, certainly when I started my career some 30 years ago, um, were basic researchers meeting with the families of, you know, with affected kids. Um, and it's really become a team effort involving the societies, the families, the basic researchers, the clinicians, and, and in many cases, the pharmaceutical companies as well, all working as a team. And I think that's, that's been a fundamental change and how and and how we've attacked these di disorders this excerpt came from the fragile x syndrome in pursuit of a cure webinar that took place on world fragile x day 2021 it was hosted by wushi aptech in partnership with fraxa research foundation follow the link above or in the description below to view it in its entirety <laughs>